The digital painting that you see here is entitled Taganok Falls, Early November. I created this digital painting on my tablet, and in this video I will walk you through the steps of its development. The painting itself is based on a series of photographs that I took while visiting Taganok Falls last November. Taganok Falls is located near Cornell University in upstate New York. Before I actually start to create the image, I'd like to introduce you to my basic setup, which is very similar to the way I set up for when I'm painting on canvas with actual paints. And what do I mean by that? Well, I've always used my photographs, photographs that I've taken, as my source information to build my paintings. Although I firmly believe in drawing and sketching from real life rather than from photographs, my paintings are so detailed, I need to record this information photographically in order to be able to use it as reference for my painting. When I'm painting on canvas, I view my photographs on a computer monitor, like you see here. And that's what I mean the setup is similar. The only difference is I've substituted now my canvas for a tablet. And instead of paintbrushes, I'm using a stylus. We have the monitor with my photograph, a wall of rocks, dramatic sunlight raking across the rocks, dark trees in the middle ground, and beautiful flowing water with gold and blues throughout. I also intend to eventually create a large variation of this image on canvas with paint. The app that I'll be using to create my digital image or my digital painting is Procreate. And I've already prepared a blank canvas that I'll use to just point out some of its features. But this video is not intended to be a how-to on how to use Procreate, so I'm not going to go into very much detail over here. Just going to give you a brief rundown. We have our primary painting tools on the right-hand side of the app. Here you can see a color that's already been selected, or greenish yellow. If I click on that, I have my palette choice. Its color range is amazing. You can adjust the colors you, in other words, select any color that you want within any individual color selection. You can select its degree of saturation from its maximum saturation to its lightest. This is my brush size tool. See how I can push it up and down? It'll change the size of the brush from 1% to 100%. Let's do it at 100% because I want to show you the, uh, the value of the color I just selected. Also, over here, I should indicate that this is the transparency control from 1% to 100%. We had that at some middle range. I'm not even sure what it was, but let's throw a more opaque version of that color next to it. See? Go back to our color, and I add more saturated color to the color that I'm using, and, and here, let's see what happens. See how much more intense that is? Okay, so that's the color selection tool that I recommend you just play around with, have fun, explore all of its possibilities. Now, this tool over here that I said cr determines the brush size, you can control your brush from a huge brush like you saw me use to a very fine brush. Now, let's select a green color. Here, make it fairly saturated. And a little dark. Okay. Now, see how fine I can control the line?
If I want to change the transparency of the color, I simply move that side slider. Now let's make the color 10% and widen the brush. See? Ooh, I went out of the line. Take my eraser tool and clean it up a little bit. So we have color selector, brush size selector, transparency selector, our tool menu. And right now I have the brush selected. If you click done, you have a range of tools that you can go from pencils to inking brushes, paint brushes, airbrush tool. Here, the airbrush tools. See? That would have been good for this area, actually. And the eraser tool. Clean up the edge. Notice, too, to zoom in, I go like that. To zoom out, I pinch it. And of course, layers. If I want to add another layer, click on the plus sign, drop down another layer. It's darker. That indicates it's my active layer. If I wanted to change my layer one to an active layer, I just click on it. If I want to get rid of a layer, put your finger or your stylus on the right hand side of the layer menu and push it. And see, you have all these options. Select, copy layer, duplicate layer, or delete layer. Now, having made layer 2 the active layer, I'll take this rather contrasty greenish yellow, put my brush at maximum, put my transparency at 31%. Double check my layer to make sure I'm working on layer two and not layer one. Yes, I'm working on layer two. Good. Select my tool and lay in that color. Now, because layer two is floating above layer one, select my eraser tool. I could erase bits of that color to expose what's underneath. See? Nice. I use that option a lot in my representational work. My stylus is a jot touch. Which happens to be a pressure sensitive stylus. Wonderful tool to work with. What I particularly like is the fact that you can actually see what you're doing because of this plastic disc that's attached to the tip of the tool. You can see through it and see the detail underneath. Having begun this video with the brief introduction to the app that I will be using to create my landscape painting, as you watch this video, keep in mind that it is not intended to be an instructional video on how to use Procreate. Its purpose is to show how I developed this freehand digital landscape painting from its earliest drawing stage to the final marks. Procreate records every mark that is made during the painting process and provides the option to export the image as a video file. 
The video that Procreate records is a much speeded up version of the actual painting process. Now as I develop the piece, and you can see I've done quite a bit of work so far, I like to always approach my new work on a new layer. This way, if something goes terribly w wrong, I don't damage what I've already accomplished. And here's what I mean. Let's click the layer. Select a new layer. Layer 2. It's darkened, meaning that's the active layer. Now I can continue to work. I am painting with the flat brush. There we go. That's my favorite brush, and I usually stick with one or maybe two tools at the most. Referring to my source photo, I continue to work into the piece. Sometimes I like to make little modifications on the color. See how I can adjust it? I tell you, this is a very direct experience, being able to see through the tip of the Jot stylus is fantastic. You could actually see what you're doing. What a pleasure. As I work, I'm constantly playing with my transparency, either increasing it or decreasing it. And I just build into the surface, work in my detail, until I achieve the feel that I want. I never rush it. See what I did? I accidentally made a mess. So, all I have to do is hit the back button, or let's call it properly the undo button. Once, twice. Good. Just trying to give these rocks some definition. Yeah, there's a center clump of, of rocks in the stream. It's going to require quite a bit of detail eventually. I'll just keep on working into it. That will be its reflection. I never really worry about detail. I just find a color I like and weave it through the surface. Oh, yes. That'll be quite a strong reflection. Can't wait to see how that develops. I see a lot of burnt sienna in my photo. So I'm going to carry it over into the rock area. A wider brush stroke, more transparency. How does that work? Okay. See, I never worry about going over detail, because then what I'll do is I'll rework the, the trees and gradually develop it in its richness. And in other words, I paint back and forth. I paint from the background. The background winds up covering a little bit of the foreground. But then I reinforce the foreground and push the background back to where it belongs.
My digital painting technique is primarily characterized by selecting and mixing a color, then working that mixed color throughout the entire surface of the image, before moving on to the next color. I almost always use a flat brush and frequently adjust its degree of transparency and thickness, and my brush marks can be described as a scribble type of staccato. What you see me do here is very similar to how I paint on canvas when I'm using actual brushes and acrylic paint. I work my mixed colors throughout the entire surface of the painting, and details gradually emerge as my brush strokes accumulate. I'm working on the foliage area, and I see some beautiful browns behind the trees. So I'm adjusting my color to the brown that I want, and using not the airbrush, going back to my flat brush. Let me create an additional layer. I don't want to work directly on the piece. I want to work on a layer above what I've painted. Adjust the transparency to make it more opaque. And adjust the size of my brush. The color is throughout the image, so I, I could easily spend the next couple of hours just working with this color. What I like about this burnt sienna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust it lighter now, is it complements the cool tonalities that are prevalent in this image very nicely. I'm adjusting the transparency even more, making it lighter, or I should say making it more transparent. I'm going to weave some of this tone into the water. In this area where the rock meets the water, I have a really nice blue. So let me mix color similar to what I see. It's fairly light. Okay, let's hope this is the blue. I'm going to make this more opaque, less transparent. Zoom in and begin to. Ooh. I want to go a little bit more careful with that. So, undo, more transparent, and a smaller brush. This area is dappled with blue. So it's about time I begin to work that in. The blue of the water carries up against the rocks. Some of the rocks are actually blue. In fact, there is a predominant blue tonality through all the rocks. I think it's because they're wet and reflect in the sky. An advantage to work in, in layers is, for example, what I'm doing over here. The water goes behind that rock. So I'm working in the water. 
Now I can take my eraser tool and simply erase the strokes that I made over the rock. That is very nice to be able to do that. Very underdeveloped area. Need to start to resolve the color structure down here. As I continue to develop the image by working individual colors throughout the painting's surface, I don't concentrate on specific details. By concentrating on the placement of colors, the details automatically, gradually emerge. I seem to always be adjusting my transparency. Sort of like when you're painting on canvas and you vary the density of your brush strokes. How do I develop the water surfaces of my paintings? I continue to just work in ripple-like colors until the surface coalesces into a water surface. See how I could use the selection tool? I hold down on an area and then I move it around and the top responds to my selected color. The bottom remains the color that I was just using. So, I want to work on the rock. I'm going to select that gray and work it in. Yeah, and it curves up a little like that and then it sort of works down. Good. Same thing over here. All these rocks need to be established. I want a little of that because I see it carries over into the edge of the rock. I find it very effective to apply almost all my colors with a slight transparency. This allows me to build in gradually by overlapping colors and gradually making a more and more opaque. It also permits for interesting color combinations, the mixing of transparent layers of color. I see some purple in that. There we go. The ripply reflection of the rocks. I not only go and mix new colors using my color mixer, but I also rely on colors that I've already placed. And I'll pick them up with my tool 
and continue to work with them. There. Going back to what I just did. I will go with the gold in the area. Rather than pre-mix it, I'm going to pick up a little that I have. Take my brush down a bit. Lower the transparency just a little bit. Okay. And squiggle away. Okay. Pick up a little of the golden green. Okay, now, here's the beauty of doing it this way, and I believe I pointed this out in other areas. Here, watch. I'm going to continue with the water. Now, I go to my eraser, and I erase the strokes that are over the rock. By working in layers, the relationship of background and foreground details are easily resolved. This area needs some serious development. So, let's zoom in. I'll drop down to a dark value and then adjust my color to the blue U, which I see in the shadow and the actual photo that I'm looking at. The rock ends right about there. Okay. I'm going to thin down my brush. That will be a solid shadow area. I also decided to work in some of the rich gold color that I see in this area. It's very beautiful. I've devoted many more hours to this digital painting since I began applying the golden color. And at this point, I consider it finished. I hope you enjoyed watching how I developed this digital landscape painting. Thanks for watching.